For most of the eight years that Joyce DeWitt worked on her classic TV sitcom Three's Company, it brought her a tremendous amount of joy and happiness. But there was a moment toward the end of the show where she felt the exact opposite. This is that story. But don't worry, it's not a complete downer. Hang on for a few minutes and you'll see why. When Three's Company debuted in 1977, it was a huge rating success. Based on the British sitcom Man About the House, Three's Company was an extremely lightweight and good-hearted farcical comedy that depicted the ongoing hijinks of two girls in desperate need of a roommate who turns up in the form of a guy that they find passed out in the bathtub after their going away party for their prior roommate. The chemistry between stars Joyce DeWitt, John Ritter, and Suzanne Somers, well, it was immediately apparent. Just watching those early episodes, you can see how much fun that they were all having working together. When it works, it's magic, and you can see it on the screen. When a casting director fails at his or her job, however, it can be disastrous. Fortunately for those involved with Three's Company, the creative folks behind the scenes were all immensely talented people. At some future point, I'll probably devote an entire video to Suzanne Summers' departure from the show. End of the day, she was looking to get the same salary as John Ritter. Looking back, that doesn't feel like a ridiculous request. Ultimately, however, the network balked and walked away from the negotiating table. Both Jenny Lee Harrison and Priscilla Barnes were great, but I will admit that Suzanne was missed. But you know what they say, the show must go on. And go on it did. And throughout it all, Joyce DeWitt was there, a constant, loyal to everyone involved in making the show, especially to John Ritter. She loved working with John and he felt the same way. As time went on, it felt like the show was moving in a particular direction with the development of these two characters. It felt like they were becoming more than friends. There were little hints that a romance might be brewing. There was a flirtatious air between the two characters on many of the episodes. And quite frankly, from everything that I've read, I believe that Joyce was way on board with the idea that when the show finally went off the air, these two wonderful characters might end up together. Unfortunately, that was not what the producers of the show had in mind. They were following a roadmap that had been created by the original British version of the show. First, they spun off the Ropers, just like the British show did with their show, George and Mildred. And now the producers were looking at what the UK version of the show did after Man About the House ended. The British version of Jack Tripper, named Robin Tripp, did not end up with one of his roommates. Instead, he found love elsewhere and the show was spun off as Robin's Nest, which was very successful and ran for six seasons. So, during that eighth and final season of Three's Company, we were introduced to a new character, Vicki Bradford, played by Mary Cotteret. Jack is instantly smitten with her, and over the course of a handful of episodes, a courtship ensues with Jack and Vicki ultimately moving in together against her father's wishes. Classic sitcom material, right? Maybe, but I can't help but think about how difficult this must have been for Joyce. She had been fiercely loyal to everyone involved with the show since the very beginning, and now it was planning to move on without her. Always the consummate professional, you would never know the end was near watching her perform with John and Mary. With each passing episode, it was kind of like they were making her dig her own grave, metaphorically speaking. And audiences in the U.S. must have felt just a little bit betrayed as well. Instead of the Jack and Janet romance that we'd seen hinted at for most of the show's eight seasons, we got Vicky and Jack and their new Janetless show, Three's a Crowd, debuting in the fall of 1984, just one week after the final primetime airing of Three's Company. The new show was not a hit. It would last just one season. I can't help but feel like if we just gotten a slightly different show with a couple of actors that had proven their chemistry with each other for years. The outcome of Three's a Crowd, or whatever they might have decided to call it, would have been very different. It's just my opinion and I could be wrong, but it's also my opinion that a decision to involve Joyce in the spin-off would have been the right thing to do. However, Hollywood doesn't have the best reputation for always doing the right thing. Like I said, although Joyce was brokenhearted by the turn of events, this isn't a particularly sad story. You see, after making a few appearances on other shows, Joyce decided to take some time away from the industry to regroup 
relax a bit and rediscover just exactly who she was. And she discovered that she enjoyed performing in live theater. Every now and again, Joyce will emerge from her beautiful New Mexico home tucked away in near seclusion to perform with great actors such as Tab Hunter and one of my favorites, Tony Dow from Leave it to Beaver. She has also recently co-starred with Mickey Dolenz, yep, one of the monkeys, in a play called Comedy is Hard, where he plays an aging comedian and she plays an aging actress. Something tells me that they might be able to pull those roles off. From everything that I've heard, the play is hilarious, but it will also touch your heart in unexpected ways. How about we get a movie version of this play for those of us who might not get a chance to see it live? I would definitely go see it for these two wonderful actors. Joyce also recently reunited with her former Threes Company co-star Suzanne Summers. After a warm greeting, Joyce sat down with Suzanne and reminisced about the good times that they had together so many years ago. It was wonderful to see these two ladies together again and one can't help but hope that at some future point they find a project to work on together. How about a show about Janet and Chrissy in their golden years? A comedic drama about two friends long separated but brought together by the death of their dear friend Jack. I would be so on board for that. In the meantime, Joyce seems to really be making a name for herself in live theater. While it affords her the ability to pop out of the woodwork every now and again and do what she does best, the less hectic pace that she maintains by staying away from the camera allows her to remain grounded and be her authentic self. So that's it. One final picture. Jack and Janet really were wonderful friends. And boy oh boy were they funny together. Anyway, what do you think? Did you like Three's a Crowd, or were you disappointed by the decision to jettison Janet for that new girl, Vicky? Let me know what you think in the comments section, and while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.